there's one particularly strange way in which new reproductively isolated species can form, and it's called polyploidy. Polyploidy is what occurs when, for whatever reason, you get gametes coming together where the uh, reduction division during meiosis has not occurred. So in this case, you've got uh, a parent species that has three different chromosomes. Uh, two in, diploid is six chromosomes total. And let's suppose that there's some error in meiosis so that each one of the gametes gets all three of those pairs of chromosomes. If two of these gametes meet up, you get an offspring that has double the parent's genome. The interesting thing about this offspring is that it may be quite viable. Um, it has all of the genes that are necessary to make a new organism, and none of them are mispaired. It's, it's not as though uh, it only has one unpaired version of any one of these chromosomes. But this offspring here cannot interbreed with any individual from this species here. So why would this offspring that has suddenly have its, had its genome doubled, why is it going to be reproductively incompatible with its parent species that has not had the genome doubled? To understand why that is, let's take a look at what would happen in a mating between that new tetraploid offspring and the parent species. A tetraploid is what happens when you take a diploid and double it. So um, we are diploids, and if a human zygote were formed that had twice the number of chromosomes that we do, it would be a tetraploid. Here's the parent species, it's diploid. Um, when it forms a gamete, um, basically you've just got one copy of each of the two chromosomes. We're keeping it simple and just saying there are two chromosomes in this species. Here's what you get when the tetraploid forms gametes. Instead of having one copy of each chromosome, it's passing on two. That produces a uh, zygote that is a triploid. And while that might grow up and be perfectly viable, its uh, reproductive fitness is going to be horrid. The reason is that after meiosis I, you end up with these uh, gametes that have unbalanced numbers of chromosomes. So if this chromosome, if this gamete goes ahead and gets fertilized, um, it's going to have only one dose of this big chromosome and two doses of this little chromosome. Some of these others will have two doses of the big chromosome and one dose of the little chromosome. And it doesn't matter whether these gametes are trying to fuse with these, or whether they're trying to fuse with these, you're going to have unbalanced um, effects. And some genes, the, the effect that they have during development or on phenotype um, is changed by whether you're getting two doses or one. The upshot is that any time that this triploid tries to make, it's going to be making offspring that have um, dosages of particular genes that are way out of whack. And this will most likely screw up all sorts of things about the triploid's offspring. And so while technically this tetraploid might be able to mate with any individual from the parent species, the genes from this gene pool never make it across into this gene pool. The genes from this gene pool will never make it across here because they have to pass through this really unfortunate triploid offspring, and it can't successfully pass on its genes to anybody. Okay. The, um, the effect of this is that when polyploidy occurs, when you suddenly get one individual that has had its genome doubled, it's a new species. It becomes instantly reproductively isolated from the uh, individuals in the species that it just came from. And this has actually added quite a bit to the diversity of certain groups of organisms on this planet, most notably plants. A lot of very important plants in the world are polyploids. That is, they've had their genome doubled, that's a tetraploid, or in some cases tripled, that's a hexaploid, or in some cases it's been multiplied even more than that. So for example, wheat 
um, what you used to have are these different species coexisting in the wild. Um, this was Triticum monococcum, this is Triticum searsii, maybe, but then there was a polyploidy event. It actually, these two different species tried to mate with one another. They ended up with an offspring that had the full genome of both and couldn't mate with either parent. It's now called um, Triticum turgidum. It was cultivated for food about 10,000 years ago, but then it had another one of these accidental matings with another wild species of wheat, so that the offspring of these two got not only these two genomes, but a third genome packed in there. And today what we have is this wheat called Triticum estivum that is descended from three different parent species that were totally reproductively isolated. Now the genome of each one of those species, all, all three genomes are mashed together into the nucleus of every cell of domesticated wheat. And this is sort of thing, this sort of weirdness has happened with a lot of plant species. And every time you get an event like this, potentially you end up with a completely new species. Interestingly, uh, these species can be quite healthy. Often when you form polyploids, um, they, they're putting together genes from two different um, parental species, but they can do really well together. And so you can end up with these offspring that are very vigorous and spread well. The other thing about plants, um, oh sorry, one more thing about, about any polyploid, is that ecologically they can be really different from their parents. So um, because a polyploid has genes from two different parent species, it may not be identical to either one of those species. And so it may not have to compete with either species. This may give it an advantage. Uh, it may be a better competitor uh, than individuals in those parent species because it's kind of occupying a unique role. The other nifty thing about plants is they can often self-fertilize. One of the big problems with being the first polyploid in the area is that there are no other polyploid individuals to mate with. But because many plants can self-fertilize, it doesn't matter. They can mate with themselves, and barring the effects of inbreeding, they're capable of generating an entire new population that gives rise to a whole new species.